Well, Melinda, reading your book, you can't help but feel that, that ultimately feminism has let women down. And yet, if you say to people, you know, the, 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 the pornification, as you call it, of, of, of life, none of us would say that, that we want that. So, so how's that happened? I think it's, it's crept up on us through advertising, through marketing, through the goals of global corporations. They're, they've done two things. One is that they've targeted children for certain products. They've, they've seen children as a whole new market and they've used um, sexualised uh, ways of approaching, of approaching the children to expand the markets. The other thing they've done is they've used children in advertising in ways they never did before. So they're posing little girls, for example, as mini adult women. They're posing little girls to, to suggest that they're much older than they are. They stylise them in adult women's ways. They put adult type clothing on them. And uh, they're the two things that have happened. And it's really about, yeah, expanding markets. It's also about the influence of the pornography industry. In the past, you had to go looking for pornography. Now it finds you. So pornographic messaging, hypersexualized messaging, has now come out from behind the counter in the brown paper bag, and it's everywhere. It's on our billboards, it's on our children's clothing, it's in our children's toys and games, it's, it's in the music video clips they watch on the weekend. So it really is about the very clever marketing of the global porn industry. Playboy, for example, used to be a men's magazine. Now Playboy is on girls' pencil cases, doona covers, pillow slips, fairy wings. Uh, the Playboy logo is everywhere. So it's about entrenching and mainstreaming sexualised messaging at every level of the culture. And it's happened so rapidly that a lot of people haven't noticed. Because in, in your book, you talk about um, a couple of teenagers who who want breast implants, and they're like 13 or 14. Yeah, more and more young girls are desiring to have breast implants. They are dissatisfied with their natural bodies. And that's, again, the power of the marketers. They make girls and women feel bad about their bodies. Women's magazines have been doing this for a long time because cosmetic companies won't sell products if women feel good about, good about themselves. Um, hair, hair companies won't sell products if they make women feel their hair is okay as it is. So what we're seeing is that a lot of girls despise their natural bodies. The stats in Australia, one in a hundred girls anorexic, one in five bulimic, one in four wants to have cosmetic surgery and self-harm has become the highest cause of hospital admission for girls aged 13 to 19, deliberate self-harm. They hate their bodies. Self-hatred has become a rite of passage for teenage girls. And again, all of that is because of the angst that is created by these hypersexualized messages, often airbrushed images, digitally enhanced images of women that girls are aspiring to. They're having procedures that were once just considered the domain of, of adult women, and often adult women in Hollywood, <laughs> uh, not the domain of, of, of little girls. They shouldn't be the domain of little girls. Botox, which is rat poison injected into the face to freeze the muscles to get rid of wrinkles, is being pitched to teenage girls in Australia as a way to get in early to prevent wrinkles. Get in early girls to prevent wrinkles. 17-year-old girls in Sydney are having Botox. You know, and this is how bad it has become. So what you're saying is, is that the, the people that are the people that we should trust, such so people like, like, like doctors and and I guess people, corporates, big corporates who, who um, have in the past been good corporate citizens and, and toy manufacturers, these are all people that, that we expect to trust and, and they're letting us down. We've lost that whole notion of corporate social responsibility and I've set up an organisation to help remind them about their corporate social responsibility, Collective Shout for a world free of sexploitation. We're naming and shaming advertisers marketers and corporations who objectify women and sexualise girls to sell products and services. And we're seeing some victories in Australia. We're only five months old. But we feel like we need to make them accountable because they're obviously not recognising they have a duty of care and a responsibility, particularly to children. So we're making them accountable in the only way they seem to understand, and that is by telling people to stop spending money with them. Uh, and that seems to work when they think they're going to lose money. But you talk about um, the need for responsibility. I'll give you another example. Nickelodeon is an international children's media company, prides itself on its family values and its desire to educate children. Nickelodeon has just produced some games for primary school aged children, including P 
Perry the Sneak and Naughty Classroom. In Perry the Sneak, the child becomes a peeping Tom and is awarded points for how many women he can spy on in the shower. Nickelodeon, global media company, children's media company. Naughty Classroom, the wording for this game says, children, now you can act out your sexual fantasies for your teacher. So that's what I'm talking about, the mainstreaming and entrenching of pornographic messaging, the scripts of pornography into children's games. And there are so many more examples. So I think we have lost that whole notion. I think corporations want to make money and uh, aren't always thinking about the end result of their, of their endeavours. As parents, why aren't we complaining? Well, parents are rising up against it uh, once they're informed and equipped and empowered to do so. Certainly we're seeing that in Australia right now. Um, there's in America the campaign for a commercial free childhood has a campaign against Nickelodeon, the example that I just gave. It is happening. It's happening slowly though. I think if, if good people rose up en masse against this around the world, the corporations would have to change their behaviour. So I think uh, it's time for parents to, to realise what's going on. A lot of parents really have no idea what their kids are doing online especially, so they need to be informed and they need to take action, not only in their personal lives by boycotting this culture and not buying into it, they also need to take the debate up with their regulatory bodies that are supposed to be protecting our children from this stuff. In Australia we've targeted the Advertising Standards Board and the Classification Board, which have completely failed us. And also we need to take it up with our politicians, our members of parliament, and ask them, what are you going to do about it? What commitment can you give us to address this toxic issue, which is having demonstrable physical, negative physical and emotional outcomes in children, emotional health outcomes in children? What are you going to do about it? And if you don't do something about it, we won't vote for you at the next election. What's the effect on children of this? I mean, what's, what's the effect on them now? And I, I guess in the long term, what's going to happen to them when they become adults? Well, the American Psychological Association did a study into this, its task force on the sexualization of girls, and found that exposing girls to hypersexualized images, objectified images of women, which are plastered all over the public domain, contributes to eating disorders, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, poor academic performance, self-harm. So demonstrable negative health outcomes. In Australia, we've got six-year-old girls being hospitalised with eating disorders because they hate their bodies. They don't like themselves very much. So we know what the research says. There's other reports out since then, the UK Home Office report. Scotland has produced a report as well. And all of them say the pornified, pornifying of culture is damaging to children. They're not cognitively and developmentally equipped to process triple X messages that they shouldn't have to process. They shouldn't have to understand that stuff. Children are being raised in a shadow cast by pornography. Their little girls are told that to be acceptable you need to be thin, hot and sexy and, and act in hypersexualized prostitute-like ways. But all the global research says this is damaging, this is harmful, this is dangerous, it's getting worse. So if we truly care about the health and well-being of young people, we need to address this as a matter of urgency. And Melinda, thank you very much indeed for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Join us.